comes in the name of Jesus. On this Resurrection Sunday where we are remembering and being reminded of the sacrifices of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we're just so thankful, Lord God. Where would we be, Lord God? Had you not taken the sins of the world upon you, Lord God? Yes. Where would we be, Lord God? Hallelujah. If you had given in, Lord God. The word of God says that you could have called a legion of angels, God, to take you down, but you chose to stay, Lord God. Yes. Yes. Thankful, Lord God, for the word that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son yes, yes. that whosoever believeth in him will not perish yes. Thank you. Thank but they will have everlasting life God thank you that our life is in you thank you Lord God for your sacrifice thank you Lord God for this day you rose with all power in your yes, hand, Lord yes, God. Yes. And because you rose with power, that same power, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit lives within us as we believe and serve. Lord God, thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord God. The songwriter said for another day's journey, yes. we bless you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We extol you, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord God. Hey! We say hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for your power. Thank hey, you, Lord hey, God, hey, 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 for keeping us. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you the honor, and we give you the glory, and we give you the praise for this day that you have given, a day that we've never seen, and a day that we'll never have again. God, let us live it to the fullest, Lord God. Bless this day, Lord God. Service, Lord God. The word of God that comes forth. Bless, Lord God, in the name of Jesus that it will do what you had planned for it to do. That it will speak to our hearts. That we will be stronger in you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the word that it will accomplish that which you have set forth. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless our hearts to receive it, God. Bless the praise and the worship, yes, God, yes. for it's to your glory. Hallelujah. And we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes.
truly thank God that we want, amen, amen, we want more of God's glory. How many of y'all can, amen, agree with me? Yes, that, yes. Amen, that we want more of his glory. Oh. Yes, Lord. Because his glory is, of course, we know it's his presence as we worship him and as we adore him. Amen. He showers us with his presence. Amen. Delivers Amen. us, protects us, shields us, strengthens us. Amen. Gives us peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. And his blessing. And all right. So we're going to see this, y'all. Give us more of your glory. <laughs>
that he has called us to do. Amen. Amen. So there are some things out here, amen, or tasks or mandates that God has set for us. And so, amen, we've got to be prepared and ready to do what God has called us to do. Amen. I believe that there is a word from the Lord today, and I believe that this word is life-changing. Um, I've told y'all oftentimes, amen, that God will give me a word and and that word would deliver me, amen. I'm giving the amen. word, I'm get, giving the word, getting it together, amen, from the people of God, but at the same time, God would give that word for me, amen, and deliver me. And so I'm, I'm just thankful and grateful for the many things that God has done for me out of just simple obedience, amen. amen. And so when we, when we are obedient, amen, he says that he will eat the good of the land when we are obedient. God will bless us abundantly. When we are obedient, God will heal us. When we are obedient, God will deliver us. God, when we are obedient, God will empower us to do exactly what he's called us to do. So if y'all would, amen, we're going to go straight into the word of God. Amen. And I want you all, if you would, turn to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew, I believe, chapter 17. Amen. Chapter 17. Amen. Going to have, um, if you would, First Lady, if you can help me on those Amen. verses, chapter 17, verse 14, Amen, 14 through the 23rd verse. But for sake of time, um, I want you, if you would, just to read verse 23, verse 23, 22 and 23, I'm sorry. Amen. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22 and 23. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorrow. Verse 23 again, it says, And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. Yes. And they were exceeding sorry. I want to bring to you today a, a word that is going to encourage and transform you called the third day anointing. Mm. 
Amen. the third day anointing. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. God, there is none like you. You are strength. You are shield. You are buckler. God, you give us the faith. You give us the authority. Yes. And you give us the power, Lord God, to take care of the things that you have for us, Lord God, here on earth. Lord God, we are not afraid of the enemy, anything that the enemy brings our way, God, because you have prepared us. You have equipped us. And Lord God, and you cover us as well, Lord, yes. with your blood. And so it's in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Amen and amen. 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 The third day anointing. And so as I was beginning, all I kept hearing is the third day, the third. I didn't know what it was about the third day. And I was, and of course, if we think about the third day, you know, Jesus raising, from the, uh, amen, from the grave the third day. But I believe that there's something that um, even deeper in terms of in God's word and revelation, what he wants to reveal. Um, Sister Glenn, can you see me pretty clear on the counter? Yes. Okay. So uh, there are some things that I believe that um, God wants to reveal to his people. Amen. It is it, it's a powerful, I believe it, encouraging, amen, transforming word, but also a powerful word, amen, that if people would grasp it and take hold of it. I, I can't possibly teach it all today, amen. So I'm going to start with the first part, amen, as the Lord leads and, and we're talking about again the third day anointing the third day anointing now he's given us faith authority and power those three things faith authority and power and we look at the you know faith we look at authority and we say you know authority may be the same as power yes in some instances it is but sometimes you have you have you know a lot of times people have power but they don't use their authority. They have the power, they are endowed with power, they are endowed with God's uh, Holy Spirit, but they don't utilize the authority. Then uh, same way, some people have authority, they know how to, you know, think about it. Some people, law enforcement are those who are appointed to authority, but yet they don't use, again, the power, amen, that's in them, all of the power. And so we have different ways and, they have the authority, then they have the power, but yet they don't have the faith to activate or to utilize or maximize the authority and power to the fullness. So there are three things that, again, God wants to bring out in terms of what does it take, amen, what does it take, amen, for that third day anointing to come forward. Now, we're looking at today, we're looking at, we're going to cover just one um, realm and that is just faith again Amen. we have three things that we're covering or to, to, to look at with this third day anointing as faith authority and the power today we're just going to talk about faith Amen. so there are three keys to uh, life's transformation three keys to life's transformation and of course again that first key we want to talk about is faith everybody say faith okay. so let's go to back to our word and Matthew chapter 17, Matthew 17, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. And it says, and they were come, and they were come to the multitude. There came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often often to the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Let that set in for a second. And they could not cure him. Now again, we are, there's some things that uh, the, the Holy Spirit wants to bring out here. Why is it that they were not able to cure him? Okay, verse 17 says, Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, mm -hmm. how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Bring him hither to me. 
So the first thing we want to look at again for the third day anointing, we have to have the faith. But there's some times there's some blockage things that are stopping our faith from being totally in, in full operation. Amen. Amen. So that faith is, again, what we believe. What do we believe? What are we hoping to accomplish? What are we believing God to do? Now, we were all given faith to move mountains. Amen? Amen. We were all given faith to move mountains. Let's look at that scripture going on. And so it says in verse, what, verse 18? Mm -hmm. Verse 18, Jesus, Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was what? Cured from that very hour. Yeah. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus responded and said, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So here's a couple of things I want to bring out. Again, we all have faith, amen. We have faith to move mountains, yes. but we have to utilize that faith that God has given us. But here's the thing. Jesus said in that verse, if we go up in verse 17, mm -hmm. there's some things that Jesus recognized and, and, and pointed out that is keeping the people of God from moving in full operation of, of, of their faith. So he, here's what we must do. In order for us to move in the third day anointing, we must guard our faith. Amen? Amen. So what am I saying? In, in guarding our faith, we must guard ourselves from what? What's the opposite of faith? Fear, uh, fear or unbelief. Mm -hmm. Not believing what God has said in his word. And so here he said, oh what? What did he say? Oh, faithless. Is it, do we have any other ter interpretations or translations? I'm sorry. Any other translations? Everybody says faithless. For faithful. that, it says, um, for that, it still says, you know, you oh, talking fearless. I mean, faithless. Faithless uh -huh. and progress. Yeah, it's still, all of them are going to say that because that was the point mm -hmm. that they didn't have any faith. I'm going to go to um, okay. another one, but. If I'm not mistaken, it says the same thing. Um, verse what? what In this verse 17, 17. 17, yes. Yeah, it still says, well, it says, you unbelieving and perverse generation. There we go, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so going back to the same thing. Thank so you. going back to the same thing, unbelief, mm -hmm. not having faith. So what is keeping God's people from moving in the third day anointing is a lack of faith. Amen. And so we have to guard our faith, believe it or not. We have to guard ourselves from um, faithlessness. Amen. Uh, uh, other words, we got to make sure that with, there's not a, that there's um, that there's an absence that there's not an absence of faith, that we must Amen. be full of faith. And so that's the first thing. But look at the second thing. And this is what the, the Holy Spirit was showing me. The second thing, what does he say? And sometimes we just brush over that. What does he say? Oh, faithless and what? Perverse generation. And perverse generation. That per, per, the word perverseness is, again, impurity. Unclean. Mm -hmm. And so people think that, you know, they can just take the anointing of God, amen, and, and quote the word and speak the word of God, and things will happen. But yet, if we live, you know, I, I'm not trying to judge. Sometimes God will move despite ourselves. But at the same time, God is not going to move in the midst of your sin. God is not going to move in the midst of your mess. And you're expecting him to do great miracles. But yet you're living any type of way and you're believing that, that God is going to overlook that and still is going to be all right. Amen. No. God wants us to live, what's the opposite of uh, perverseness? Purity. 
Amen. God wants us to live a pure life. Some people will say, oh, no man can live pure. No, God gives us his word it, to, to direct us. And so we should, on a constant basis, be striving towards what? Purity. Purity. Mm. Or what's another word? Holiness. 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 Reaching toward the mark. Pressing toward the mark. For a high call. Amen. God is not called. Of course, God has not called everyone to the same calling. But amen. Me of faith. God has called us out of a life of sin and darkness into a life of holiness and righteousness. Amen. And so each day of our life, there should be something in our life that we say, hey, you know, um, that's holding me back a little. So I need to let it go. Amen. And go forth toward what God wants me to do. Amen. Because there's something that he wants me to do for him, and I can't do it living the way I'm living. That's right. I've got to be a living testimony. Amen. For him. And so solution, again, the solution is, again, faith and holiness. Amen. We have to believe, and then we have to do as God told us to do. And now, listen, here, here's the thing that um, um, my, my wife tells me a lot of times because she, um, she, you know, she observes some things. And, you know, sometimes people uh, uh, call me and they'll call me. You haven't heard them from a while. And, and they're not really, you know, after you finish talking to them, you realize they're not really calling you to see how you're doing. They're calling you because they want something. <laughs> <laughs> they want something. And listen, I, I, I'm not against people calling you if they want something, you know what I'm saying, and they're genuine. But it comes to a point that, you know, you should call people, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm just a little selfish here. You should call people and, and really be genuine about checking on them to see how they're doing. Not because, okay, well, listen, I'm going through something really um trying and I need you to pray. Okay, that's cool. And then they call another week, same thing and they pray and want you to pray for them and I'm not against that. But then every time you know what I'm saying it's something and then then there may be something that's not even mm -hmm. concerning prayerful but they want some knowledge. Hey, do you know about so and so? Can you help me out here? And you, you know what I mean? And so my first lady said, sometimes she said, I don't see why you put up with them, you know, you know, get, otherwise, and I know she, I'm, she feel I'm calling her the copy, and she's like, mm. but, <laughs> but no, she's, she's truthful, you, you, you know, Al, you know how us men are, we, we sometimes, we put up with more than the woman, you know, the woman see right through them, we be like, sure, okay. <laughs> Sure, what do you want? Okay, maybe I can help you. Like, hmm? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure about that? I don't see you. Why do you let people use you? And so I'm bringing that all out to say is this. And this, don't get me wrong, it's correlating, it's connected with this. Listen, we, we want results, we want changes, we want deliverance, we want God to answer our prayers. But there's some things that we have to do. We have to get rid of those two things that unbelief ourselves. And then we got to get rid of the perverseness of our lifestyle. Amen. amen. If we want God to bless us and change our lives. Amen. We have to let it go. And so the solution again is faith. Believing what God has said in his word. And then the other word that we said is. And it's not a dirty word. It's holiness. Amen. Amen. Man, the word of God tells us, without holiness, no man shall what? See the Lord. Amen. So we have to be obedient to do what God wants us to do. And I'm going to re read this again, that point. We have to believe and do as God told us to do. And again, and don't train others who are obedient. Amen. You can, look, look we can have the, or they can have the same blessings as we. If you do what God says, what you need to do. Here's an example. Here's an example. 
Go to Luke chapter 12, 35 through 38. 35 through 38. Luke chapter 12, 35 through 38. Amen. Amen. Somebody read that for me. Luke chapter 12, verse 35, 38. Yeah. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Okay, and your loins, what? Be girded about uh -huh. and your lights burning. Okay. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord mm -hmm. when he will return from the wedding. Mm -hmm. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. So what he's saying here, real quick, is to be ready when he returns. Amen. You, you, we're living in the last days. We see that and we know that. Things are not, you know, people say, I'll be glad when they get back to normal. They're not going to get back to normal the way they were. Amen. Because we're living in the last days and, and believe it or not, and we, we, we don't want to, you know, be people of, what they call it, doom and gloom. However, things are getting worse. Amen. Mm -hmm. If we just open up our eyes and we open up our um, a, a, a senses and a, a alert uh, our um, discernment to what's going on. Go on, first lady. Amen. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Stop right there. Blessed are those who, when he returns, they'll, they'll find him watching. The word of God tells us to watch and pray yes. that ye enter not into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the what? Flesh. But the flesh is weak. is weak. This flesh is weak, whether... We've been in this race for 20 years, 30, 90. Amen. The flesh will always be weak. It doesn't, that doesn't mean it gives you a license to sin, but it will always be weak. So that's why it says watch and pray. So when you're watching and you pray, you're seeing the tactics of the enemy. You say, oh, okay, that's not of God. Oh, this is not of God. I don't believe that's of God. Then you know how to counterattack what they're trying to do, what the enemy is trying to do. And so we have to watch and pray that we do not enter into that temptation. Amen. Go on. Amen. Right. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch mm -hmm. and find them so, blessed are those servants. So they said what? Read that last verse again. They come in when in the second watch, or come in in the third watch. Come in the second watch and listen to this, and then come in the what? In the third watch. In the third watch, part of that, Amen. That third day anointing is being, Amen. Having a watchful eye. Amen. Having a watchful eye, being alert, being ready, Amen. For whatever is coming your way, whatever that is against the kingdom of God. The enemy's aim is to destroy the kingdom of heaven. Try to. He cannot do it, but he'll try to destroy the kingdom. Amen. The kingdom is here, amen, even on earth. Amen. amen. What is the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the what? Holy in the Holy Ghost. So his aim is to destroy what? Your righteousness, peace, your peace, and then your joy. Yes. Those things. And think about it. If he can destroy your righteousness, your right standing of God, what has he done? He's destroyed your, your purity, your right standing of how you are to be with God. Therefore, when it's time for you to stand up against him, you can't because why? Your righteousness is in, in, in your flesh. Your real righteousness is not of God, but it's of yourself. And so we have to be, amen, standing in the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Not in our own self, not in our flesh, but in him. And then the righteousness, joy, and then the joy, standing in the joy of the Lord. Because you you know, guys, that listen, guys, girls, you know, our strength comes from what? The joy of the Lord. I don't care what nobody says, amen. There, there have been times that I've been down, but I, I, I would just start singing, just praising God. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I got strength again. Wait, I'm looking around, what the strength? 
where did the supernatural strength come from? It came yes. from praising God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Allowing God's presence to come down in my situation. So the kingdom of heaven and righteousness, joy, and then what? Then peace. Do you realize that the enemy and even in this these last days, his aim is to destroy your peace. Think about it. We look at um, look at the situation that happened the other day, and we thought it was so tragic. I mean, on both ends, a young man who um, in Washington drove his car into a barricade and, um, and then drove it into two police officers and killed one, and, and one is in critical condition. I mean, such a sad uh, state of uh, the situation, a sad state of mind, and then you also look at the sad thing about the young man being so young. Mm -hmm. This wasn't a young man that didn't know anything to go. He, he was in college, went to school, graduated. Graduated right? with he, distinction. Uh -huh. Graduated with distinction. And so you ask yourself, what in the world happened? Mm -hmm. The enemy's aim is to take, steal your peace. We don't know exactly the, the full um, synopsis of what happened. But think about it. Maybe, you know, the enemy gave him some drugs and he, you know, he just, just went off on the deep end. We don't know what happened. Maybe he was having some mental issues and, and again, the enemy uh, attacked his mind to want to, to show you, you know, he wanted to take his life because he knew what was going to happen if he had a knife ch chasing police the officers. You, you know, he knew that they were going to kill him. So it's kind of like a suicide type of action. But at the same time, you look at that, you say, what is the enemy trying to do in these last days? Steal their joy. Take down their righteousness. And ultimately, destroy their soul. Wanted to, wanted to take away their peace. Their peace. Amen. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I can't. I won't trade anything else for God's peace. Amen. 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 I, I'm telling you, I, there's been times that I felt like I had everything else, but when those times I didn't have peace, I was like, you can take all that other stuff. Just give me my peace back. Yes, sir. Give me my peace back. Yes, sir. And so the important thing for us to do, amen, is to see what the Lord wants us to do. Did you finish reading that uh, first letter? Yes, I did. I okay. can read it again if you Okay. Want. Now, let, let's go to the third point. Third point. We need to stay or be ready and that our, our lamps must be trimmed. Now, get this. Not only should our lamps be trimmed, but they should be what? Let's go. Let's go to the word. Let's see what the word says. Uh, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. And this is a, a, a little longer passage than the, the others, but there's a point I want to drive home and then we're, we're, we're finished as the Lord says the same. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through, I believe, through 13. Read that. Amen. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, begin to look at this story here. This is a parable. And look at that there were ten virgins and they took their lamps and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. So they were, they were mandated to do a certain task, job, and let's see what happens here. And five of them were wise. Five of them were wise. What happened to the other five? And five were foolish. And then five of them were foolish, go on. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Mm, okay. They that were foolish did what? Took their lamps and took no oil with them. So it goes back to the point that I was making earlier about the third day anointing. Some have the faith, amen, the authority, but they didn't take any power with them. Amen. 
And in this case, we're talking about, you know, if we look at the all, all representation, you say the Holy Spirit, they wasn't filled. They just went throughout the day doing what they wanted to do and didn't prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. So preparations to keep going, first thing. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their ah. lamps. So the wise, but the wise did what? They took oil in where? In their vessels. In other their words, they, they spent time with God, amen, even before they got there. <laughs> uh, they spent time in prayer and preparation for what was to come going. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Okay, so there will come a time that we will get tired. Amen. Amen. But even when we get tired, he, he, here's the important thing. Don't wait to, till you're uh, full out of energy. You don't have any strength. Amen. Because there'll come a time that, and, and you know, sometimes I, I pray and I, you, you know, sometimes I may burn the midnight oil and working business-wise and, and um, it, it, you know, in the morning coming, I'm like, oh, the Lord, let no emergency happen. <laughs> Well, I've done only had a couple hours of sleep. You know, you have to think about that. And so, the, but the important thing is, let me, Lord, uh, wake up enough time so that I can pray to refuel myself so that I can be prepared for the day going. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Okay, at midnight, there was a cry made. And what happened? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Stop right there. So that's just like what I was saying earlier. You know, people will drain you. Give us, you know, pray for us. We want you to pray for us, you know, and uh, help us out. You give them advice, they didn't accept the advice. But yet, when they end up in a bind, they're like, can you help me? Can you pull me out? <laughs> and so, and again, we are to be as shepherds, as elders, as ministers, uh, you know, uh, 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 of the flock, household of faith. We are to help people. But there are times that, you know, again, we should not overexert ourselves and then go throughout the day empty. Mm -hmm. God does not want us to go empty. Yet Jesus um, gave the example, or the, in the word he gave the example that when the lady who had the issue of blood touched Jesus, yes. what happened? The virtue came out of him. Mm -hmm. Means that, the, you know, the healing, healing power it was decreased. Why? Because somebody pulled out. There's a um, there's a, a series that I watch now called it is faith based. It's called on uh, Netflix. I don't know if y'all seen it called The Messenger. Mm. And there's a lady, a, a lady who has the healing power. Everybody has their own types of power, but the lady. I remember one time she had the healing power, and they were they were visiting at a hospital, and some um, one individual in the hospital had cancer. And she went, you know, she had compassion for them and she went to touch them or one of the other people that know her, you know, as she went forward after she touched them, she fainted. She, he said, so what did you do? You just healed her? She said, I couldn't help it. <laughs> you know, she was compassionate. But God would not have us to be, to drain ourselves all the time Amen. and not stay on full. Amen? Amen. He wants us to help people, but not to the extent of, um, there's something that Glenda always says to me. Don't let your emergency, your lack of... Your lack of planning becomes my emergency. Don't let your lack of planning be... Become my, become my emergency. Other words, in many cases, a, a man, you could have prepared yourself naturally for this situation if you took the advice, let's just say what, what Glenda gave you, what Donna gave you, but... Yet you didn't follow the advice now that the situation is upon you mm -hmm. and you're not ready and equipped. Now it's an emergency and you need 
help. desperate help. And you, you look back, and I know mothers and fathers, we look back and we say, child, did you not listen to what I told you to do? Right, <laughs> did you not? I, I told you, yeah, mama, daddy, but you know, I'm, look, we wouldn't be in this situation if you just did what I told you to do. Yes, sir. I know it's a simple analogy, but in his word, God says that he you know, wants us to be prepared and to be ready. Amen. I believe that, and, and man, this is revelation right now. I believe that even right now, there's going to come some more, amen, tragedies, or shall I say, some more events that the, amen, the people of God got to be ready financially. Amen. Prepare themselves. Amen. And, and so when the things, when these things, natural disasters come, amen, we won't be scraping around like the unbeliever. And saying, okay, how can I get out of this? No, God already spoke to you. Say, prepare yourself. Amen. Save some money. Put something away. Invest Amen. something. So now you're ready. And so I believe that God, again, wants his people to be ready. I believe that there, there are things that God um, is moving upon his people in the spirit realm and showing them. Things and, and First Lady and I, we, we experienced this last night. God is showing us certain things in preparation for, for the future. Amen. And so we got to take note of that and prepare ourselves. Amen. For it, and it, 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 it includes being ready for his blessings. Amen. Amen. But if we drag our feet or if I drag my feet and become slowful and lazy and don't do what God has said, prepare myself for when, again, when life events come my way, amen, I find myself wondering, how am I going to get out of this situation? Amen. No, God wants us to be prepared. Go ahead, first lady, yes. and then I'm finished. Um, repeat, eight, and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so. Mm -mm. Stop, stop, stop right there. So some people think that you're supposed to just give, 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 give. No, yes, listen to the wise <laughs> virgins. The wise virgins even said what? No, no. not so. <laughs> so there are times we have to say no. 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 Even when it seems like that, you know, even when we can help them, we still have to say no. no. Why? Because if we don't say no, then they don't learn from their experience. Right. They don't learn, they don't know how to get out of the situation because they're so dependent, let's put it, put it back on the parents, they're so dependent on mom and daddy, amen, that, you know, when they get in a, a bind, it's like, let me just call mom and daddy, they'll get me out of this situation. <laughs> and we gotta say, no, no. How could you be a parent like that? Oh, you know, that's mean, that's cruel. Uh, I remember the time that my foster mom, when I went, when I was in college, and I went back from um, uh, Kentucky State my freshman year, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm going back home, and I'm working on my job, and blah blah blah." And, and um, my foster mom, she said, "You, you know, since, since you're here this summer, you got a job. We want you to, you know, contribute to maybe help out around." I said, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> This is my house. I'm all alive. Like, wrong. Wrong answer. What she was trying to teach me is responsibility. Yes, she was trying to teach me, amen, that in the real world, you've got to pay for things that you want. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Whether it's shelter, whether it's food, clothing, you know, taking care of bills. And so that was a great lesson for me. Yes, sir. <laughs> because what? I thought I was smart. I said, like, oh, I said, show her. I'm going to go back to Kentucky State for the summer. And I worked there. <laughs> well, guess what? It was tough for me because guess what I had to do? I had to pay rent. <laughs> I had to pay for my food. I had, you know, some other things. I had to pay for the bills. You know, I had a roommate. You know, this other roommate, he was cool and he was set, but I had other expenses. And I can, uh, what do you call, loaf off of somebody else? Is that the right word? Yeah. yeah. And, and so it was a lesson. So 
going back to what, what, what the word is saying, there are times we have to learn to say no. Amen. Amen. And we have to prepare ourselves for the third day anointing. Because there's some there's some things that people, there's some people who need our help. Now that's don't, don't get me wrong, y'all. We should help family. Don't get me wrong. That's just an example. We should help family, but there are times that God is going to place on our heart to help other people outside of our family. Amen. And we're to reach out to help them. Amen. And so we want to be in a position where we have prepared ourselves. Amen. We have equipped ourselves so that we can help someone else. Amen. So Jesus, here's what I wrote. Jesus did what was necessary so we can experience what was once impossible. Go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 22. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22 and 23. And then we finish. 17, 22 and 23. Yes. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22 and 23 mm -hmm. reads, And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. And they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. See, what they didn't see on the third day was that Jesus was going to be raised up again. Amen. Yes, they, they, you know, they point, they was like, what do you mean, Jesus? No, this is not going to happen to you. You're going to be, they going to, what are you talking about? They going to kill you? No, I, you know, who was it? Peter? <laughs> Peter wanted not to be so and Jesus rebuked him. He said, listen, I got to do this, I'm paraphrasing. I got to do this. If I don't do this, y'all won't be saved. And so there are times that we have to go through moments of suffering. There are times that we have to go through moments of tough discipline. Amen. Because that discipline in, in the long run is going to help us to bless many others. Amen. If Jesus didn't go through that suffering yes, for us, where would we be? If Jesus didn't say, okay, I stretch my arms out wide, hallelujah, Jesus. If he, Jesus said, no, don't leave my, leave my side alone, don't pierce me, where would we be? Uh, Amen. Jesus had to do it. Amen. His blood had to be shed for us. Amen. So that we can experience the blessings of God. So that we can experience, amen, hit the abundance of God. He yes, came that yes. we might have life and life more abundantly. Amen. He came that we may have salvation. For God so loved the world that what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him should not perish but shall have what? Everlasting life. Again, that word everlasting, just like the word give us more of your glory. is everlasting. Yes. Everlasting life. God wants us, us to have everlasting life. God wants us to have a life full of peace. God wants us to have a life full of joy. God wants us to have a life full with abundance of hallelujah, his love, so that we can share with others. Amen. The third day anointing is here, but we have to learn how to, amen, amen, grasp it. The faith. Amen. Knowing how to walk in our faith is how we, amen, going to be able to manifest his, the third day anointing. What am I talking about? Amen. As we close, we're talking about that faith to move, as Jesus pointed out. Move mountains. Things that seem impossible. There's some things that I'm, I, I even told my wife last night, there's some things that I'm believing God to do and to the natural man it may seem impossible but I'm believing God. Amen. Amen. Do y'all have some tasks or shall I say uh, goals, dreams and life that seems impossible but I believe God can do it. Amen. 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 But it's going to take on our part our uh, willingness to believe God. Just a mustard seed of what faith? Somebody say just a mustard seed of faith. Just, just look to your neighbor and say just a mustard seed. Just, just a mustard seed. Look at somebody else and say just a mustard seed. Just a mustard seed. Look to one more person and just say just a mustard seed of faith. Just a mustard seed of faith. 
So as we use the mustard seed of faith, yes. in accordance to how God has planned, and according to what God has laid out in his word, we will be able to experience his miraculous power. Amen. We will be able to experience and walk in his anointing. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your love, grace, and mercy. We thank you for your anointing. Ah, Jesus. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that we are not afraid, Lord God. Hallelujah, that we'll walk in it, Lord God. We'll talk in it, hallelujah. We'll be all that you've called us to be, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. And it is because of your anointing, Lord God, that yokes will be removed. Yokes Hallelujah, will be destroyed. Burdens will be lifted up off of our shoulders, Lord God. And so we just thank you for everything that you're doing right now. Let this word reach your people, Lord God. Hallelujah, show your people what it is, hallelujah, that we need to do, Lord God, for your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we thank you and we praise you. And Father, we say one more prayer, Lord God, even on this resurrection day, Lord, if there's any that do not know you as their personal Savior, Lord God, hallelujah, that at this moment, Lord God, whether they're watching this, Lord God, by recording, Lord God, and, and, and present, Lord God, hallelujah, in this place, that they will receive you as their personal Savior, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And so we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 All right. We amen. We're going to take up. We're going to take up the offering at this moment.